Hello again and welcome to uh, the next topic in our overall uh, kind of architecture section which is MVVM, the, the MVVM pattern in Android. So we're going to look specifically at MVVM within Android um, uh, and then and uh, how we can uh, apply it. Okay. So the agenda, as I said, we'll do a quick quick recap uh, just to refresh our, our memories on what, what it is. We will look at the components in detail. Okay. So it's very important that you get a good grasp, a good understanding of uh, what the components are and how they work together to allow you to then apply the MVVM pattern to um, your, your particular application, your particular project itself. And to try and explain that in a little bit, bit, be a bit more detail, a bit better, we look at a very a simple code example that um, you could then possibly apply uh, elsewhere, okay? And then we'll finish off with a summary. And I suppose in the final section, then we'll actually just do a code walkthrough of um, uh, how we've applied MVVM currently uh, within Donation, how we, we, we uh, refactored uh, the application, okay? So just a quick recap, what is it again? Currently, uh, industry standard recognized software architecture pattern that overcomes the drawbacks of uh, the MVP and MVC design pattern. So again, we would have covered that in, in detail back in, in that, that first section. Uh, it suggests separating the data presentation logic, your views or your UI part, from the core business logic part of the application. And again, that was the big issue with uh, MVC. You ended up having, as your apps got more complex, you ended up having very logic heavy activities, uh, which were kind of your controllers, which were then tied to your view. So there was uh, a lot of kind of blurring of the lines there, okay? Uh, has three major components, your model view, view model, and a fourth one, which is our, our binder, which is your data binding. And we look at that in um, in detail again in this, this overall section, okay? Uh, so just to recap on, on the, the, the kind of high level look at how it all hangs together. So there we have our model, our view, uh, again, no, co no totally decoupled, no interaction whatsoever, which is big, big plus for the pattern. Uh, but also the view is decoupled from the view model, I won't say the controller or such, but just uh, the, the, that that component within uh, the um, uh, the overall design pattern, which again is a plus for testing and scalability. Okay, so if we look at the components in uh, in detail, okay, uh, so you will be familiar with some of this, but there's no harm in kind of just going over it again. Okay, so models uh, are components that are responsible for handling the data for an app, right? They're independent. That's the key here. The key here, they're independent from the view objects um, and app components in uh, in your app. So they're unaffected by the app's life cycle and the associated concerns. So again, not to go on about it, but that was the big issue with MVC is that uh, because there was a there was uh, a link between the model and the view changes in the, in the app's life cycle would have would could have had a, a negative effect on um on your your model component okay but that's all done away with within um uh, mvc okay now with the model and view model work together to to get and save the data so we're going to we'll see that a lot now in um uh, in the example and then in our own uh, kind of walk, code walkthrough as well okay uh, generally it's recommended to expose the data uh, in your in your model right to the view model okay through observables right so that's going to be our live data in android so the view model uh, view model component and live data component will work very closely together to um, uh, achieve these, this uh, goal of uh, uh, displaying, updating, managing data within your app, okay? A little bit more uh, just about the specifics of our different components. So if we look at the, the view model itself, that was a bit, a bit about the model, how it interacts with the other components. The, we'll talk a little bit about the view model here, right? It's an object, a view model object provides the data for a specific UI component, such as a fragment or activity, and contains data handling business logic to communicate with uh, the model. So again, a lot of the code that would have initially been in an activity should really be uh, in the view model. And we look at some principles later on now as well of what kind of the do's and don'ts of, of trying to apply the, 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 the pattern itself, okay? But as an example there, the view model can call other components to load the data and it can forward user requests to modify the data, 
Okay, so mo as I said, most of the, the, the business logic and uh, w w will end up in your view model. And you can have more than one view model within an application, right? Uh, so it, there's a kind of a general rule at home, whatever the particular feature that you want to implement, it will generally have a view model um, uh, to, to, to kind of manage it, to represent it. So within Android itself, when you go and build for argument's sake, and use the wizard to build um, a nav drawer, uh, depending on the features, it will have a corresponding activity fragment, right, or slash fragment, and a corresponding view model to work with that particular feature that you want that. So whether it's a, a simple list, whether it's an ad, uh, an update or whatever, uh, it will automatically supply you a view model to accompany uh, the corresponding fragment, okay? which is a kind of nice feature with an Android itself, okay? Uh, the view model does know about UI components, so it isn't affected by configuration changes, such as recreating acti an activity when rotating the device. Again, one of those common problems that were would have cropped up within the MVC has been done away with uh, by applying the MVVM design pattern and using the architecture components, uh, one of the, uh, the, 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 the obvious one here, the, the, the view model component, okay? A little bit more about the view. Okay, so in MVVM, the view is very lightweight because it has almost no logic in it. That's again, going back to MVC, the majority of the logic would have ended up uh, in the activity which would have kind of controlled the view as well. Okay, so that, that's all been done away with. The view uh, is mainly responsible for everything UI related. So Think you should again we would have come across this before but just to no harm and kind of been explicit about it your menus event listeners showing dialogues toasts your snack bars starting activities switching between activities whatever okay um, in android the view is usually an activity or a fragment its role is to display whatever it receives from the view model and forward input to it and the final point there the view observed that's the important terminology there the view observes the view model. So what we will end up seeing, and we see examples of it later on, is within our, be it an activity or be it a, a fragment, we will have very little logic. It will be just essentially triggering events, calling uh, functions on a view model object or observing a view model object. And within the view model object, we're going to have our live data. So ultimately, Within a view, which is observing a view model, which is managing the live data, when the data changes, our view will automatically be updated because we are observing it. This is all part of those architecture components, okay? Hopefully this will become a little bit more um, uh, obvious and evident when we look at, at some examples later on, but just, just trying to give you an idea of how it all pieces together, okay? So some of the principles for our view, view model communication, okay? So again, the view uh, should not have any logic in it. Uh, we've kind of mentioned this now on a couple of occasions. Uh, not even a simple if condition, if, pardon the pun, if possible. So if you can at all, don't have any actual logic in there at all. All you should be doing is triggering events, calling functions on a view model uh, instance, okay? Um, all logic for the view should happen and do, does happen in the, the, the MVVM approach uh, in the view model. Okay, so just looking at a simple example here, this possibly would be inside your um, uh, view. There's my view dot visibility. If, and again, look, a user dot is admin. So you're, 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 you're checking some other component, tying back to your model, possibly directly to your model. This user should really be maintained inside a view model instance and then you trigger some function on the view model to go look at your user okay so that, that's the kind of approach you probably should be taking okay uh, in response to events the view should only notify the view model by calling a method nothing more the view should not pass any view related classes to a view model so you shouldn't be passing around references that's where the memory leaks kick in in the first place okay so it's all about just triggering uh, functions. So in this example here, 
and we will see some of this in our own kind of code code examples we have this button which is on the view we're setting a click listener there we are just triggering saying submit data on uh, a view model so whatever's going on inside that it's in there we would be accessing possibly uh, the raw data okay and again we will see later on how we can pass information around that's all done through our data binding okay so that that, that that's the, the binder element which we'll, we will we cover now uh, soon enough uh, another one there number three the view model uses live data as the primary means of communication uh, or communicating with the view okay the view only observes the data and is notified of any changes so this is very close to the kind of code we'll be looking at and we, we you will see this quite a lot um uh, in in the, the, both the examples we look at and in uh in, in within donation itself so here's our view model instance we have some property of that dot admin accessibility that would be our live data and we can observe the live data uh, through our observer element okay so again these are these are implicit um uh, uh elements that come with uh the, the view itself so the view only observes the data and then there's the view that visibility is assigned so this would be the like, like the iterator like going back to our data structure if you can remember back to that which kind of just standard kotlin stuff this will get at the view uh the, the, the visibility property itself so whatever uh, admin access visibility in this example here whatever value that would have we are assigning directly to uh the my view reference which is inside this view model which we are monitoring essentially observing uh within the view okay uh, final one there the view can call the view model whenever it needs something and the view model can provide helper methods for the view if necessary so again it's kind of, we might have a some kind of example like this so with this function this is inside our view model and it, uh, kind of returning an if condition based on so if the if the view element is visible right um or else uh, view dot gone so that 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 could be triggered within the view itself just returns an integer value there um, but this again would be just called from the view and and then the view can provide those helper methods um uh, if, if if required okay um now just to talk a little bit about uh, our MVVM components again the binder okay so the binder is some component that performs the actions described by the binding they are important to the MVVM framework as they allow you to decouple the view from the view model and does the heavy lifting of handling the synchronization of state between the two so it's like a middleman between the your view model which ultimately is managing your raw data and the view itself, how you want to display it. So these binders allow for that kind of synchronization, that movement of data uh, between the two, okay? Um, and that's what we're gonna be using again. Specifically, we have a data binding library, which is part of the Jetpack overall kind of suite that we can use within our, our, um, our application, okay? So just last point there, the binder does the following interprets uh, bindings defined uh, in typically the UI so that we can attach directly to properties of an object within the layout. We can pass in a reference to our data actually declaratively within the layout, which is very, very nice, okay? Um, it observes the view model for changes in state and updates the view, and it observes the view for changes in state and updates the view model. So we can manage the data both ways via uh, the binder so it's very like if, if you've done any web work at all it's very like that two-way data binding um, in the likes of view in the likes of react and all the rest of it so that you're you, you can um, uh, if it's updated in one place the changes are reflected in the other and vice versa okay so if we look at talk a little bit about data binding before we kind of look, look at our example, right? So the data binding library in Android is a support library that allows you to bind UI components, okay, in your layouts to data sources in your app using a declarative format rather than programmatically. So what we would have been familiar with something like this. So we could say we'd have our find view by ID. So what we're saying here is we want to bind to a particular text view 
there is the reference so it's called sample text which is on the um, uh, uh, on the layout itself that's th that's the ID of what we're looking for and then we're saying we're going to update the text property with the view model dot username so whatever the username of the view model is we want to update the text field of the sample underscore text text view okay now that's a th that's a couple of lines of code for a very simple um, uh, assignment okay so if you extrapolate that out where you might have five or six individual text views that you want to populate those start getting a bit unwieldy within your code base itself okay uh, so that's w without using data by and, and again you don't have to use data mining um, you could uh, quite safely use code like this but the whole purpose behind uh, Jetpack and these components is to make the developer's life easier. So if you do have the opportunity and you can use those components, then it's re it's recommended that you do. Okay. So if we look at an example uh, without it, okay. So the data, as I said, it's a support library. So with data binding. So if you notice here, it, this is directly inside the. Um, uh, the layout itself. So here's our text view. Here's our text property. And again, note the at, and we're saying so we're activating. We're, 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 this is a directive. Again, very similar to what if you've done any web web kind of coding at all, any any um, with Vue or um, uh, Angular, or React, any of those. Here we are getting directly at the username property of the view model. And if you have it implemented correctly, you could actually change that in-house in the field itself, and it will update the view model, okay? And again, so all this removes the need to call the code previously. So if you think about it, five or six um, fields in your layout, you can access and get at the text property directly, declaratively, like so, doing away with, if you use the previous example, 10, 12 lines of extra code just to get in and just to, to, to set and update a, um, a field on your on your layer, okay? So if we look at an example, okay? So uh, we'll take a small example here. We'll demonstrate how all the pieces fit together with a simple app using a person and eventually update, change their details or their age on the click of a button. So the, the, the idea would be that um, we have a very simple app. It's working with a, uh, a person object which has three properties first name last name and an age and then simply clicking a button on your layout on your view will update the age of uh, of the person okay so we initially start with the model so the basic data class there of type person and again there's our three properties two strings and an int giving them some default values so kind of nothing new there hopefully in terms of, of the dependencies that you'd have to bring in and the, the, the options you would have to turn on, right, will be as follows. So we can see here, we have our Android X lifecycle. And again, notice we're using the KTX dependency. So again, wherever possible, it's always recommended to use those. So to begin using your view model, your live data and data binding, you need to add in the required dependencies and just make sure that we're turning on the view binding and the data binding. There's a subtle difference. View binding only allows you to display them. The data binding is like your two ways back and forth um, uh, features. Okay, so kind of just if you want the full effect of being able to update your 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 um, uh, UI layout and the view model uh, through uh, a data binding, you would need to have have both of those turned on. Okay. So if we look at our first look at a kind of a view model of what it might look like, okay? So here we have our class person view model. Again, the terminology is generally, we if we have a class called person, it's view model is person view model of type view model. So we're hooking into that component, that architecture component. And the, the, the recommend, you don't have to do this, but the recommended approach is something like this, okay? That you would declare your data privately first, so you can say private, so with val individual person, is of mutable live data. So the 
th that basically means that we can change this person information. So this is just a single person instance. So you can see it there. There's the reference to the raw data, the, the, the data class. So we're wrapping it up in this mutable live data, which means we can observe that. So any changes um, uh, will be automatically reflected back in the UI, depending on what we want to do, okay? So uh, as well as having the pri your private property, okay, called person, we offer a public observable person, which can't be changed which is of live data, right? But we can get at it, okay? So we offer a get uh, access or, met or function, right? Which returns that person object, okay? So my colors are gone a bit mad there. So that's generally the approach to take. So that's what we're gonna do, okay? That we declare the mutable data private, and then we offer the public or the observable data as the live data so again that's read only that live data okay off all, all just for making your app your, your 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 overall kind of design a little bit more robust okay um initially when we load up that observer we're going to call the load function and all it does is assign or create a new instance of a person object so the person dot value and this is important that uh, any live data um data i suppose uh, object will have a dot value property so it's the dot value is the raw data if we try to say person is assigned person because person is is of type mutable live data you would get um uh, uh, an error there of uh, invalid type they're not the same type so it's the person dot value the dot value property of your live data uh, is equivalent to whatever type of data you're managing. So here we're managing a person. So the dot value property of our live data is a person object. So that, so when we create a new and we uh, start to observe a person uh, view model, uh, what we get is a new person created. Okay, so that's that's what just happened within that uh, view model. So if we then inside our be it an activity be it um, a fragment. So in this instance here is actually because it's a basic example, this will be inside a activity. So this is inside our on create. So the first thing we need we do, and we kind of there's a look just to be complete about it. Here we are a throw back to our kind of um, uh, view binding. So we're attaching to the layout. And this is what you're going to see quite a lot of in um, uh, later examples. And even hopefully when you're building your own uh, assignments and, and writing your own code, that this is how you will manage and apply the MVVM. So we first instantiate our person view model via the view model provider. So we can see it there, we say view model provider, uh, we have to pass in a reference that to be it the activity or fragment. So in this case, it's an activity. Sorry. Color's gone a bit mad again. So that retrieves an instance of our person view model, and then we observe that person view model, specifically the observable person. So this is our public read-only um, uh, property that we have declared inside person view model, okay? And there we are, dot observe, here we are, there we are passing in the implicit observer again. And all we do inside it is when our, so when, when our person data changes, which is, and this is the person object that's automatically passed in. It's like an iterator, again, but go back to any kind of data structures work you would have done with lists. We're just calling a person here. So whenever the person changes, what we want to do is we want to call this function render passing in that newly updated person data. So if we look at our function for render, all we do is on our layout, we set the first name, the last name, and the age uh, properties to first name, last name, and then a text version age of the um, of the person itself that was passed in. 
okay so whenever a person changes that would trigger automatically a call to render because we are observing the live data and this uh, last call here execute pending bindings just causes it to uh, be executed immediately so that we can just kind of we're just kind of forcing an automatic um, application and assignment of uh, the person object to the uh, lay, uh, elements on our layout okay so any change to person anywhere in the app will trigger that call there so you're always making sure and guaranteeing that your data is uh, synchronized which is uh, quite useful very simple example you have a list and an ad user jumps to a new activity new fragment to, to add the user then hits the back button which would uh, cause uh, changes in, in, in the life cycle so the activity will pause come back you don't have to have extra code in there to track all that because you're observing it the data itself will automatically be updated so if you've added it to the list the list will 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 be updated accordingly okay now if we bring in data binding so if you kind of ask yourself there but it, this this kind of defeats the purpose of what we were talking about so we can now kind of modify this with a little bit of data binding okay so what we can also do is inside our layout so again this is you'll see some of this as well okay we inside the layout this is important it's inside the layout tag okay what we do is we bring in a data element okay which references the person view model view model and you give it a name so here what we're saying is we're bringing in a new variable new data variable calling it person vm of the particular type okay so that 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 goes at the top of that layout tag okay and how we use it is something like this inside a text view element so here we're giving it there's that same drummer that tv, TV uh, first uh, name which was on the previous uh, a couple of slides ago here we can update the text property with again the first name property of the observable person property within our person vm uh, view model instance so that's that was declared and um, was passed into basically the layout when it got inflated but when the person object changes it will automatically be updated here so we don't actually need that render uh, function at all so because we are observing the person data and we have data binding turned on any changes to our person uh, object person data the live data within the person view model will be reflected uh, in the layout and just as an aside there because we're dealing with integers you would uh, you would need to do a little conversion using the integer class uh, like so because age would be a number so you want to convert it to a string to display it uh, in the text property okay just kind of little aside there just something to something to, to be aware of okay um, so introducing data binding so this is as I said binding to data in the view so that's before that's after so again all we have to do is update the person view model we don't have to set the fields individually all we have to do is because we are observing our data here the minute the data changes we update our um, view model instance with the person view model and that will automatically update uh, our layer okay and again notice because we're not passing in a person anymore we're not you, you could actually go back and you could remove that uh, if necessary and even remove all that and just call uh, render because all you're doing is working directly with the person uh, VM instance um, uh, which is the the element and the variable you have inserted into uh, the layout through data binding okay uh, just a little bit more about it there 
uh, if you want to bring in event handling, so we can update the model like so. So inside the class, we can have here, we're bringing in var age of type observable int. That's important to just note the observable int. So in this instance, we want to track and observe the age property. So instead of a basic int, if we declare it as an observable int, when age changes, that will trigger um, uh, an event so so that we are we are uh, as I said keeping track we are observing the um, the age property the whatever whatever value that's going to be and then that can be reflected then in uh, in the layers uh, uh, um, displaying the data okay so what we say something like this we could in our activity possibly in a fragment if necessary we could bring in our main binding dot button older. So we have this button older button on our layout attaching the listener. When we trigger the older function on our view model, that will cause the age to be updated, which will then, because we're using data binding in our um, uh, layout, will cause the age to be automatically updated and changed uh, accordingly, so keeping it all synchronized. But again, because we have data binding available to us, we can actually implement that in our layout as well. So in the, in what we can do is we can trigger an event using data binding. So this is again, another just bit of syntax to be aware of. We can have a, in our button, in our on click, here we're using our at notation again, but this is the, the syntax to trigger a function call on the person vm dot older and remember the what is the person vm person vm is a view model instance that we have passed into the layout directly which has within it a dot older function so when we trigger that when the user clicks on the button declaratively we trigger the older function which in turn updates the age which is observable which in turn updates the layout with the new age value. So again, no need for any of that event handler code. So you can, by using this uh, data binding, you can drastically reduce your code base and a lot of the logic that you 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 um, uh, might be having to work with to trigger functions uh, that are part of your, your view model um, uh, instance, okay? So to wrap it up, uh, in the MVVM implementation, only a view, right, a fragment or activity, should reference a view model. The view model should have no knowledge of the view and should not reference the application context from the view. Uh, you should leverage the Android view model class and to provide an instance of a view model in the view model using your view model provider. So that's how you how you uh, basically bind to your view model um, within your um, uh, activity within your fragment. You can't observe until you have a reference to it, until you've bound to uh, and you've provided an instance using that view model provider, okay? And the last one there, wherever possible, keep the uh, the end-to-one -one relationship between your view and your view model. So multiple views can, can reference uh, one view model, but if a view has to, has to reference uh, to two or more view models, it should be broken down into smaller views, okay? So just, again, all to do with trying to keep your application scalable, manageable, um, and trying to, I suppose, keep the, the, the logic as streamlined as possible uh, within uh, the view model. And again, this goes back to what I was talking about within Android Studio, that if you are building a um, Navador app for argument's sake, it will automatically supply you for, for the features that are available and the options that are available on the menu, it will give you a one-to-one -one on ter in terms of the fragment and the corresponding view model just for that particular, uh, and, and allow you to bind and use data binding to bind to that particular layer. So it doesn't try to, 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 to mix and match um, uh, too much, okay? So again, I think I have the same references for you there, okay? Uh, any questions, any issues, uh, you can uh, get me on Slack or um, on, or over email. Uh, but hopefully when you're working through the lab and the code work through and the rest of the section, we'll, we'll hopefully make things um, a little bit more clearer for you. And practice makes perfect. When you start using this and you start working through the lab, 
hopefully it'll it'll start making sense to you but i do appreciate that it it, it is it can be uh, there is a bit of a learning curve to it okay especially if you're not familiar with um mvc or uh, mvp okay uh, but other than that look thanks for listening and uh, goodbye